Good evening, everybody. Hope your Wednesday's gone very, very well. Who's the best right back or right wing back in League One? That's what we'll be debating with our rankings uh, later this evening. But for now, I'm delighted to be joined by my co-host, uh, Jake Tong from uh, the League One podcast and Channel 72. How are you, Jake? I'm very good, mate. Uh, I'm good. I'm glad there's a certain Dane that's made your top five. I'm very grateful. But yeah, no, I'm good, mate. Good to see you. And Lincoln City have got a certain manager in place as well, which we're going to be talking about. Um, and his first game in charge is away at Stevenage. Uh, and that's where we're joined by Matt Farley from the Stevenage Football Club podcast. Lovely to have you on as always, Matt. Yeah, mate, thank you. I'm just kind of acclimatised. I just got back from New York last week. Like literally, like in terms of the, track, the best week of my life, it was incredible. It's an amazing place I've ever been. So, um, the word, Matt. That's Sorry? Stephen. Maybe you're spreading the word about Stevenage. Oh, oh, best believe I spoke to a lot of people. A lot of people. It was really funny, actually, because um, when I was in New York, li literally this day last week, I um, went and did this like observation deck, and it was great. It was really high. Uh, and I'm a little bit scared of heights, but I was able to get around it, and it's beautiful for you. And there was a there was a chap wearing like a Southampton jacket, and I had my Stevenage Football Club chalet on, and we were getting the lift down. And... Uh, uh, they were English and they were like, oh, Steven is fan. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went, no, oh, you're doing it right at the minute. He went, yeah, he went, you're doing, doing it right. Yeah, he went, you're doing it right at the minute. I went, yeah, I'm having this great season in League One, etc. cetera. And, and, um, and when I um, got out of the elevator and walked off, he went to his sons. His son had the Southampton jacket on. And yeah, they, he went, I could hear him. They were a good side, Steven. He went, really fat manager, though. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's flat. He's doing great. But, um, but no, honestly, it was like the best week of my life out there. One of the greatest, well, no, the greatest place I've, I've ever seen and been to. So, yeah, just to climatise myself, come back over the jet lag. Yeah, back into the swing of things, mate. Yes, I'm, I'm all good. I'm surprised your g is actually clean, mate. I've heard, according to, to Reese and uh, Andy on the pod, you were wearing it about five days out of the time you were in New York. No, I was. I was. It was non-stop. I even, right, when I went to the Statue of Liberty, so I wore this to the NFL and, and my Wednesday last week, so I wore it around Central Park. And, and even on the Tuesday, Statue of Liberty, I had the Borough hoodie on. So it was like every day there was, there was. I think the only day there wasn't one thing that I was wearing was when the day out. No, actually, no, I even had my top on. Ignore it. Every day I had something Borough. There you go. Um, but no, no, it was it was really good. And yeah, yeah, come back, got into the swing of things. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been good. It's been good. Talking about the swing of things then, uh, how are you feeling about Stevenage in terms of the last uh, last few games? You seem to have uh, continuing your, your brilliant form. Yeah, it's been class, hasn't it? God, I know where to start. Um, yeah, because we, we had the tough run. Uh, we knew that was going to be tough. But um we come out of it winning games and, you know, it's, it's been one of these things. We lost to Blackpool that day 3-0 and we were, you know, bad day at the office, played the wrong way um, and then picked up a couple of draws after. Port Vale, we didn't play well against, got a draw and then Bristol Rovers, we were great in, should have won, but got a draw. And then really, I think that performance at Bristol Rovers was just a platform to get us back winning games again. Derby, we were brilliant, played a lot of good football that day, which was really surprising. But, we, we, you know, I come and hear Gavin said I think against those you know bigger clubs top sides you have to play some good football and we did against Derby it could have been more that day great win um, and then we've just continued it FA Cup we had a big goal reading moment again uh, and then uh, last to, Matt do we think we have to change big goal reading's name because he scores so often I feel like regular goal reading signs what more RGR is that yeah, what you're going for Gavin call him RGR BGR, I mean, mate. It's BGR. It's got to be BGR, isn't it? Yeah. It's got, it could, it could be, be RGR, BGR, don't they? Well, yeah. well, what, what begins with B that means regular? Oh, God. I don't know. You've got, you've got me there. Yeah. You've got me there. I don't know. I, oh, you could have CGR, consistent goal. I don't know. I don't know what you could have to be there. But it's got to be BGR, isn't it? I guess that's the, that, that's the nickname he knows. But... You know, it, it, great, great, um, great day in the FA Cup. I got a fat lip. One of my med mates at the head butt me and I went to New York with a fat lip, although it got cleared up. But um, <laughs> yeah, he did that. And then Wickham last week, scores again. Um, you know, he's on a crest of a wave at the minute. But look, things have been great for us. Again, everyone knows how we play and, and that, you know, it's quite a successful part of our, you know, season at the minute with the players we've got. So 
Yeah, look, it's just been terrific. Fifth place with 29 points. Home form's great. You know, from, from eight matches, we've just lost once. Away form, we've got 16 points out of 29. So it's all pretty, pretty damn good at the minute. And, you know, a, a brilliant win at Wickham last Saturday um, in a game that we played really well in as well. So, uh, yeah, look, it's been great at the minute. We're, we're just, yeah, just, in, just enjoying the ride, yeah. Jake, um, uh, one of the standout things I think about Stevenage is that they seem to just consistently do the job against teams outside the top six and, you know, against mid-table and below sides. They just seem to be impeccably consistent, don't they? You're trying to scare me, Gab. You're trying to scare am, me. Yeah. Just that he is. Um, he is. No, yeah, I, yeah, they do. Um, you know what? When you first come up, that's the most important thing because when Stevenage came up, they wouldn't have been expecting to be in the position where they are now. They would have been expecting to be, you know, maybe ten places down the table, further on, um, and, and it's really important then that you beat the sides in and around you. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that they're able to to compete with them, especially when you look at the recruitment they had. Steve Evans is a reliable manager at this level. He's done it before with Gillingham, where they nearly gate crashed the playoffs in the COVID season. Mm. Um, and if, if you look at Steve Evans' record. You know, wherever he's been, pretty much he's been able to do it against the sides that are closely contested to the teams that he's managed. You know, I think back to Mansfield when we got promoted out of the league. Um, they took points off us. They took points off MK Dons. They took points off Berry. Um, so I'm not surprised at all. But they are very good against those. Sort of, they're they're very good at the opposite of what we are. They're very good at taking the favourites tag. Um, and they're, well, they're also very good at being the underdogs as well, it, it would seem. But um, when they are expected to win against a team that are blown on the table, they, they do the business. It, they've got a very good squad gap. Um, mm. You have to realise that they would have, you know, they probably would have pumped a bit of money into getting some of the players that they have. Um, and they're, they're bearing the fruits of that because, you know, they've got some very good players who are, let's be honest, top end League One players. You know, you look at Louis Thompson, Ben Thompson. Forster Kasky has been at the top end of this level before. Yes, you have some unknown quantities in, in, at this level with Jamie Reid and uh, etc. and Carl Piagiani and Luther Wilding, etc. But they've all stepped up. And I think the the continuity of having Steve Evans in the in the dugout as well for such a, a period of time from, you know, because when Steve came in, they were pretty much rock bottom and he's had this momentum and he's brought these players up with him. Uh, and he's a great motivator. As much as I hate him, he's a great motivator and you know, players want to run for a brick wall for him. I don't know why, but um, they do. And uh, that's probably why they're, they're, they're doing so well at the moment. And um, I'm petrified of going there on Saturday because I think they'll probably turn us over as well. <laughs> um, Matt, it, it seems to me that it's been a combination of uh, really good recruitment. So players um, that you've signed, like Louis Thompson, like Nathan Thompson, like Aaron Firstly, being brilliant additions, with your, your Carl Pejani's, Jamie Reed's, and um, Jordan Roberts stepping up, um, either as well as expected or in one or two cases, probably a lot better, even. But yeah, that's exactly the case. I think it. You know, it's quite funny, actually, because when, when we come into the league, and I've said this many a time on our pod, you know, it was all about upgrading the side and upgrading the team to be competitive in, in League One. Um, and actually, I, I remember at the start of the season, um, I think a lot of people predicted us, uh, well, for the main part, about bottom eight, bottom nine, somewhere around that. But actually, when you do your homework and you look at the players we recruited, and actually, really, it kind of, kind of suggests that we were probably going to be a top half team. And I know that sounds quite crazy because we're we're a small club, and when you look at the other clubs in the division, you, you naturally you would gravitate to put Stevenage in the bottom nine. But it's about football, isn't it? In this division, you could be the biggest club, but it's about who you got on the pitch. And I remember there was actually a few of us looking at the squad at the start of the season, going, "Hang on a sec, we, we've got a top ten team here." I know a lot of people are going to think we're mad for saying that. But at the end of the day, you can't look no further than the players we've recruited. And, and as Jake said, we've recruited a lot of lads that have been competing for promotion in, in, in League One and actually a few lads that have played championship. So actually, when you look at things, we kind of had a feeling that this could be happening at the minute. Um, so, yeah, look, it, it was a very simple case of upgrading the side. We did it brilliantly. Um, you know, Steve brought players in who he, he's either had before or tried to sign, which is a common trend with Steve Evans. Um, mm. And I remember when I had Steve and our pod and the recruitment process started the night that we got promoted. 
so it shows you the the you know professionalism that Steve likes to have in terms of you know the football side of things. He, he, was, was, he was doing a Player of the Year awards at Stamford that he night. Was. <laughs> he was. He was doing a play. He said to me on the, on the way to doing the uh, players ceremony at Stamford. He was on the phone to Nathan Thompson's agent. And Nathan <laughs> Thompson, yeah, yeah. And he was saying that Nathan Thompson, this cra crazy world of football that, that we're in, right? He was saying that Nathan Thompson's agent, Nathan is obviously in the playoffs at the time of Peterborough or going into the playoffs. And Nathan, agent, uh, Nathan Thompson's agent said, well, look, he's out of contract. You know, he's looking to go elsewhere. Uh, with Steve, he's now come up. You know, it's a possibility for Nathan next season. So Steve was kind of confirming players before that that season even ended so it shows you the kind of depth that we went it's into just, so like, it's just a different level i think just like, mm. like a relentless mm. sort of mentality um and i think to be honest i think that sort of translates across the team and you've got you've got players who are a bit like that as well we've talked about carpe jani where it's just mm. you know you feel like you know he's getting up at five or six o'clock every morning and going to the gym for a couple of hours mm. Or going and into training, it's just it's like it's going above and beyond. That's why Stephen and Jar where they are. It's that mentality for me. Yeah, it's his mentality. It's you know, Steve's built a family, a community. All the players, you know, they socialise and they, you know, they're, they're like one big family down there at Bragg at the training facility. And you know, it is. He's yeah, he's just he's he's a master of that, Steve, isn't he? He somehow brings players to to clubs, players that you never thought would sign, like your Nathan Thompsons, Louis Thompsons, are, you know, players I never thought would we'd ever see at Stevenage. So he's, he's done a he's done a remarkable job, and 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 that I am. Um, I, look, I I don't know what's going to happen this season. We we can't predict what's going to happen, it, you know, in by April time or May. But what I will say is, if we're lingering by Feb, um, just, look, you just can't. You, you can never you can never say no, can you? You just don't know what's going to happen. We've got twenty nine points. We're there. We've had a rocky period and come through it. Which, you know, if you look at Extra and Port Vale, they've had rocky periods and declined. So the fact that we've had a bit of a rocky period where we had some tough games, but we're still fifth and there. And now when we look ahead, you know, after Lincoln, we've got Fleetwood. You know, we've got some games there, with, you know, Burton. We can pick up points in extra at home. So, you know, I, I don't know what it is, chaps, but I've just, I had this feeling last year that something crazy was going to happen at the end of the season. It did. And I've just got the same feeling again. And I don't want to say it because we're in League One and we're joined by all these great clubs and these great players. And I, I don't know what it is. I just have this feeling that we're going to get to the end of the season again and we're, and we're going to be involved. I'm going to say something. I'm not going to say promotion. or I'm just going to say involved in something because this Stevenage team, we've got special. They've got an identity that works. They've got a manager that knows how to win. and um, I don't know. I've just got this similar feeling again that something mental is going to happen this season. Uh, look, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, let's hope they don't go on a run like. Let's hope they don't go on a run like AFC Wimbledon did, Gab, a few years ago, where they didn't win in was it seventeen or was it twenty oh, like, twenty odd games? Like, no, oh, come on, Jake. The, the, the experience in the, the, the experience in this Stevenage squad is completely different to Wimbledon. Wimbledon had like a really youthful squad. I remember, yeah, no, I'm only doing it to get it far. Though. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's doing it because like we're that. playing them Saturday, you know. Yeah. Mind games. Yeah. Mind games. Look at him. I'm meeting him for a beer as well. I, I promised to buy him a beer on Saturday, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna get him a beer. There you go. Not that he'll show any gratitude for it. <laughs> I know. Well, well, I thought, you know, like, if I could soften the opposition a little bit and they could go, oh, actually, Stephen and John aren't that bad. And then on the day, bang. Do you know what I mean? 4-0 slaughter. No, I'm joking. It's not going to be 4-0. But um, no, I'm just saying, no, no, it'd be nice to... Uh... Oh, could you imagine? No, surely not. It can't be. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, I, I think what I would say, just to sort of follow on from what you said there, Matt, is I think you've just got to kind of enjoy the journey because what will either happen mm. is Think, uh, results will plateau where you manage mm. to sustain mm. uh, these kind of results uh, or, uh, you know, you might at some point sort of have a bit of a drop off. So I think for, as a Stevenage mm. fan, you've just got to make the most of, of this time and, well, and it's adventure, really. But that's it. I think that's what I'm doing. Like, do, you know, do you know what, fellas, right? Normally uh, we come into these seasons every season. Oh, it's a lot of pressure to get the 50 points and start. 
I'm not even like that this season. I'm just, I'm just enjoying the games. Like going to games home and away, enjoying watching the team play. Whatever the result ends up, the result ends up. I'm not really bothered. I just, I just want to enjoy watching the team play and, and get behind the team and support them. And, and again, whatever happens, happens. I mean, you know, if we do decline at the end of the season, well, do decline in the second half of the season, it happens. Uh, and if it and if it doesn't, then then we'll you know we'll be right up there. What what I'll say is, I feel like at the minute. People think, you know, we're going to decline, we're going to decline. It hasn't happened yet. So it, it was a little bit like last season. I think people thought, oh, it'll happen, that they, they'll drop, and it didn't. And I get the similar feeling this season. Will it happen? Again, who knows? And, yeah, no, I think you're right. We, we're just we're just enjoying it at the minute. And you look, no one predicted us to be where we are, um, 29 points and fifth after after 17. So, look, what, whatever happens this season happens. I, I just I, – I've, I've kind of learned to – live with the fact that under Steve Evans and this group, they seem to pull out what I like to call heart-fluttering moments at certain in certain points in the season. We had one in the FA Cup last week. So who, look, who knows what they're, what they're going to do. But yeah, you're right. Just just enjoy the ride, I think, is the most important thing. Um, before we move on from Stevenage, Matt, we've got to mention Luther Wilding, who we'll be discussing mm. later in, in the context of best right backs and right wing backs in League One. Um, do you think Luther Wilding deserves to be in that conversation? Do you know what? First of all, I, I think it's great that he's involved. Uh, and, I, and I thank everyone that's. What well, was it you that's put the list together, Gab? I was it? it you no know, one challenged it. So I'm. I'm oh, Gab. Well, th- thank you, Gab, for, for, for involving him. Um, I think it's credit to Luther, like, you know, the, the progress and the improvement that Luther's had as a player uh, since Steve has come in. It's a bit like Jamie Reid, actually, to be fair. Mm. Since Steve has come in, look, we've seen a, a massive improvement with Luther. And Luther's a good, you know, Luther was a good player before Steve arrived, but, you know, we've seen a noticeable Luther incline. resurgence, isn't it? Because I remember in the late 2010s, Luther Wilding was one of the biggest talents in League Two, mm. I think. Uh, and then for whatever reason, uh, you know, under a couple of managers didn't quite kick on. And then under Evans, he seems to have just shot up again, doesn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah, that that's it. He, you know, he's massively improved under Steve again, like like Big Goal Reedy and a few other players. We've seen a massive improvement with Lufa. I, look, I think, yeah, I think if someone said to me, do I involve him in the, the top five or top ten of the right backs? Yeah, I do. I, I have a lot of faith in Lufa. I think Lufa will play championship football one day. Um, and who knows? He might even play Premier League, who knows? But I certainly think he can play championship, for, certainly. So, yeah, I think Luther's definitely got to be involved in 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 those in those players. It's great to see him there because you know a couple of years ago we we never would have um, never would have dreamt him being there. But he's made a lot of he's made a lot of improvements. He's made a lot of progress under Steve, and he de- and he deserves to be there. And look at the minute he, he's playing for a team that are fifth in League One. So you know, and he and he's contributing to that. I, I think that's the other thing as well. You know, yeah, you, know, you can play in a team that that's doing well, but are you contributing? Luther's contributing. Luther's you know, he's he defensively he's been fantastic this season. When we're going forward, he's a massive support. Um, he suits the way that we play. You know, Steve wants the ball being delivered into the box regularly. Luther's got a great delivery. And and by the way, it's something that Luther's worked on. When we first got Luther, his delivery wasn't so good. He mm. was hitting the back of the corner flag and in it out of touch. And now he gets the ball and he gets the ball in really well to the players that we've got in there. So yeah, I think I'd involve him in that. And and I'm yeah, proud to see him there. It's it's great to see his progress and improvement. Um, I actually speak to his um to his dad actually. His old man sits around me in the north and um, listens to the pod called Edwin and uh, really nice chap, really nice family. And I think they're in the mindset of kind of you know pinching themselves that they're watching Luther in League One almost. So yeah, look, he's a, a lovely chap, Luther, and um, over the moon that you, you put him in his list. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Um, right, well let's move on to Stevenage's opponents on Saturday, Jake Lincoln City. Um, uh, first of all, how excited are you that Michael Scabala is the new Lincoln City manager? Hey, coach. Sorry. Good question because I don't actually know. Um, yeah, look, it's it's a bit of it was a bit of a roller coaster the last month, to be honest, Gab, because we had about nine different favourites for the job. We had all these people linked with it. We had Stephen Bradley, then we had Damien Duff, then we had. Um, Stephen Kenny was meant to be, you know, losing the Ireland job and wanting to come to Lincoln. And then we had Des Buckingham. And Des Buckingham, I've done the rounds on Twitter and stuff. People reckon it was a bit of a coup if we were able to get him out of his contract with Mumbai and everyone was getting excited. Oh, we're going to beat Oxford to Des Buckingham, etc. Um, 
and then we didn't realise that um, that 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 was probably never going to happen because we couldn't afford him. Um, but Scabala came literally out of nowhere at probably twelve o'clock on the day he got announced. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, he, he's he's a, a a similar sort of coach to Mark Kennedy, I suppose. He's done his time in the academy. He's not got a great deal of, of senior first team football. But if you look at his style of football, it's a lot more attacking than what Mark Kennedy's was. So he, he plays with a back four uh, predominantly, which I think could suit our our current squad. Um, we've he plays on the front foot. You look at his Leeds United side. Um, is under 21 side. They press like absolute monsters. Um, I've watched a couple of clips of their 21s where they're, they're constantly pressing the bat line. And yeah, I, I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, it, it's not Mark Kennedy and Tom Shaw's reign was getting a little bit sour towards the end in terms of performances perhaps weren't as good as... I'm not sure a caretaker reign can get sour. <laughs> well, you know, he set the bar high by beating yeah. Charlton, to be sure. fair. Um, and just before we carry on, uh, Matt, yeah, I know you've got to head off, but uh, thanks so much for joining us and uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully speak to you again soon. See you tomorrow. Yeah, look, so I did want to shoot off. I, I didn't realise I got running tonight, so I got my running session tonight. So, no, look, really sorry I couldn't say. Next week I am free, so if you need me. But, no, look, chat, it's great to see you. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, enjoy tomorrow. this rest of the show. I'm sure it'll be good. <laughs> Top man. Cheers, Matt. See um, you later, guys. See you later, so, yeah, um, the, the high-pressing style with a back four is very interesting because I think, um, yeah, the back three gives you a lot of defensive solidity, Jake, especially with three natural centre-halves. Um, but actually, if you want to play a pressing game, I think it's more common that teams press out the pitch with a back four rather than with a back three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued because you think about our squad from a, a tactical point of view. Let's say he comes in and implements a 4-2-3-1 which is what he's done at Leeds. And there's not I'm not saying that he's going to do it on Saturday because he's only had, you know, four days working with the players, etc. Um, but you've got the two Ethans or the Ethan compound, as you like to call them, as the double pivot in in midfield, which would would be very good because you'd have Erehan who sits deeper and then Hamilton would be able to get forward and, and join the front four. You'd have Danny Mandroy in his natural position as a ten, which would excite me. You'd have a fit Ben House if we can actually get him fit. Um, at the really top, who's a very good pressing forward, mm -hmm. um, Rico Hackett on the uh, and by the looks of it, he likes his attackers to play really wide, and I think that would suit someone like Rico Hackett on one you side. Think so? And it would suit playing further wide, and, and then you'd have Dylan Duffy on the other side, who you're both pinging crosses in, etc. So, um, I yeah, I, I it's going to be interesting, Gab, to see how he gets on. Obviously, he's mm -hmm. on a three and a half year deal, so I imagine they're going to give him a a little bit of time. Well, Mark Kennedy was on a six-year deal, wasn't he? So a four, well, four, four years. Oh, four, deal. okay, fine. But um, it, yeah, we'll, we'll but yeah, it. no, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. But he, 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 look, he's got really interesting route into football through futsal and rugby university, and then going into Leeds and doing really well for their twenty ones. Even managing the Premier League and took a point at Old Trafford against uh, Ten Hag's Man United as well, which was pretty good. But. Um, mm. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It'll be a slow process, I imagine. But sure. there's still an opportunity this year for us to finish in the top six, Gab, because we're only, what, well, we're on 25 points, 20, mm. 20, 26 points now. And, you know, Stephen should play the game more and on 29. So we're still in the, we're still in the hunt for it. There's still a spot in the top six for me, I believe. Mm. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be a, 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 a interesting sort of ride the next couple of months to see how he gets in. I think it's good that we've got him in now because he's got, eight or nine games before the January window to sit to to really test out who he thinks can play his brand of football and uh, to see where he, he needs to strengthen as well. Because I imagine the Americans are going to back him uh, in January in the summer. So mm. really intrigued to see how he gets on. Absolutely. Um, do you think Dylan Duffy is someone who uh, who's going to thrive under the new management? I think so. Um, like I said, he likes to play his wide attackers very wide almost on the touchline and mm. Dylan Duffy has that incredible delivery with his left foot um one instantly springs to mind which was quite ironic given it was our last game this season but last year when we played Port Vale um he came on at 85 minutes and put a really good ball into the box for Adam Jackson to score the winner um, in injury yeah. time he's got a really wicked left foot and I think also 
Um, he's energetic. He'll press. He's got legs. So I think he'll be really good in a pressing system as well. Um, but even even under Tom Shaw in recent weeks in the win against Notts County and then the draw against Port Vale on on Saturday, he, Dylan Duffy was the standout player. He was fantastic down that left side, at, whether it be at wing back, at left back where he ended up at, or on the left of a front three. I think he's going to be dangerous. And um, he needs a bit more time to adapt to England. He's not had a, a great deal of starts. He's had to be patient this season. But, you know, he's still only 20, 21 years old. Gary, he's, he's got a good future, that's for sure. Yeah. I, do you know what? I think I'm really excited, Jake, about the prospect of Lincoln City. I think you've got a good core fan mm -hmm. base there. I think you're going you're gonna to have fresh investment. I think there's a really strong infrastructure, a really smart recruitment process. Um, so I think there's so many things. And I think with the right head coach um, that can put a real, there's some good defensive foundations in, by the way, in, you know, you've sort of put in by Mark Kennedy. But I think if Lincoln City can establish a real style on top of that and get a really top head coach, which hopefully Michael Scabala is going to prove to be without putting too much pressure on him straight away. Um, I think that's a, an incredible exciting proposition for sure yeah I, yeah I think you said it Gav on Twitter that the Lincoln job it was one of the most attractive jobs that would come mm -hmm. up in the EFL in 2023 because um you know you didn't know that Oxford the, the Oxford job was probably going to come up a couple of days later mm -hmm. um but I, I still think in terms of infrastructure investment fan base we've got a very good playing squad Gab one that even before Mark Kennedy lost his job you were confident that would be able to get in the the top six so um, it, it, it is, it, you, you're right, it's absolutely a, a good opportunity and hopefully Skabala is the, you know, I, 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 the board have got some pretty good appointments, that, you know, in the CV. They've got Danny Cowley, Appleton took us to a, a playoff final and then Mark Kennedy, whilst he might have had some critics during his time, I think he improved us because you have to bear in mind, you have to look where we finished the year before. We were flirting with relegation pretty much the whole season before and he came in and and we finished 11th, which was a pretty good finish, I thought, on, on 60 points. We got 10 more points than we did under Appleton. Um, they've got a pretty good history of recruiting good head coaches. So um, if they, they've done a very rigorous process, it's taken over a month. Um, they said they had a short list of 15 coaches. From I, I mean, a month against getting the right appointment is, is nothing, really. It feels like a long time, but actually... It, if you yeah. want to really drill down into it, I, th you know, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, I, and I, I think he's been pretty much um you know i've seen a clip on, on on youtube of matt hancock being drilled by those investigators i don't know if you've seen it gab um, seen it. about the, the about the pandemic I, I have a feeling that that would have been clive and liam and jez in the in the boardroom with a, with a little spotlight on skabala's face saying right what are you going to do what are you how are you going to improve us what are you going to do you know so hopefully a uh, bit friendlier than that hope, you well know. you'd hope so but um <laughs> but no i i look it's really exciting and you know, what better way to endear himself to the Lincoln City fan base? And if he goes and beats arch enemy number one, Steve Evans, on Saturday, that would be a really good way for him to You're not it. keen on him, are you? Um, <laughs> not at all. Um, well, um, former Steve Evans club is Peterborough United. We're joined now by Tim Studley from the Yellow Block of On The Posh. How are you, Tim? Yeah, good evening, fellas. How are we doing? Yeah, we're re we're really well, thanks, Tim. Uh, just wondering how you're feeling about Peterborough's promotion chances because um, before the season uh, it was difficult to find too many causes for optimism, uh, and now you know Peterborough look like uh, something of an irresistible force. Yeah, I feel like you've you've come on this journey with us, Gab. I know you and I, I spoke in there. <laughs> you, you and I <laughs> spoke in this. It is. I mean, you'll be celebrating promotion with us come May, so it's fine. But no, we, we spoke in the summer and we were, I was incredibly pessimistic. The fan base was was kind of mid-table was where we were, were aiming. And then obviously a couple of months ago, I spoke to, to both of you lads just after we'd beaten Lincoln, actually, Jake, if uh, memory serves me well. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, at that yeah. point, there was there was a little bit of optimism boiling, but we were still, you know, feet on the ground. And then since then, we've just we've just gone on a on an amazing run. Yes, we, we've just lost to, to Wigan, but prior to that, we were on our uh, best league run, a uh, best unbeaten league run in a decade. Um, we're looking good. Now, there's there's three certainties in life, uh, death taxes and, and posh collapsing at Christmas. So we've still got that to come. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jake. But well, we, do have a, we do have a mutual dislike of Steve Evans. So I feel like we've bonded over that, if nothing else. But no, it's uh, in answer to your question, Gab, I'm feeling, I'm certainly feeling a lot more confident. Um, I feel like, Fergie's 
got a tune out of some young players. I'm mm. fully aware that they are being young. They will be driven by confidence and momentum. So a couple of bad results in that may all change. But they, they've continued to surprise me and, and the majority of the fan base throughout the season so far. So that only bodes well if they can keep that going. Uh, January is going to be big for the club off the field. Um, that could have an impact on the field, of course. But no, I, we're, we're feeling confident, certainly much more so than, than last time we spoke, that's for sure. Absolutely. Um, I don't know what you think about this, Tim, but I look at the um, the pace, the exuberance and just the electricity about this Peterborough attack where you've got Kwame Poker, who's uh, incredibly talented. Joel Randall certainly coming on. Uh, he's having a great season. Um, you've got um, Efron Mason Clark and then they're forging a great quartet with um, uh, Jake, um, Jake, Jake, sorry, the, the J, it's a JJ, but I've forgotten the... Uh, uh, Ricky Tyree, J. Jones. Ricky J. Jones, there yeah. we go. I, I always get him mixed up with Tyrese John Jules, who I think Lincoln had, but Ricky J. Mm -hmm. Jones, thank you. Um, do, uh, do you think that, that this Peterborough side is almost more reminiscent of early Fergie junior days than maybe the promotion season of 2021? Yeah, I do. And I think that's probably why we've had similar kind of results. He's he's built uh, a team that doesn't know when they're beaten. Um, he's got that flair out wide, which we had with uh, the likes of George Boyd back in the, mm. you know, the golden days. So I think the only thing we're probably missing, and it feels a little bit wrong saying this when we've, we've still got JCH in the ranks, is we're probably still missing that goal scorer that we had uh, back in the day, if you like. But at the moment, though, those wide players, the players that you've mentioned there, um, they're, 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 they're doing the business. So ultimately, do we need that forward? I think we probably still do. I've got high hopes for uh, Malik Mothersill, who's kind of just working his way back from, from injury. Uh, I fully expect him. Sorry, say to, the name again. Sorry, uh, Malik. Malik Mothersill, who we bought Malik in uh, waiting for JCH to go. Uh, I fully expect him to, to take the number nine shirt when, when Johnson does go in January. So, yeah, I mean, it's all the time we've got that attacking threat, things are great. But that's not unusual for Posh to have that. I think the difference this year is that we... We seem to have found a little bit of stability at the back, uh, which is something that we 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 don't usually have in posh squads. We've kept quite a few clean sheets, which are you know they're, they're a foreign entity to this club. So it's you know it's nice it's nice to, to have a bit of confidence in the the back line. There's still a few question marks around the goalkeeper, um, but it's League One. Uh, what team has full confidence in their goalkeeper? I'm not quite sure. So well, um, yeah, we'll see what the next next few months bring. It's a, a big January for us. It's one where I guess we're kind of hoping. Not a lot goes out the door, really, is probably what we're we're looking for. Is that the best case scenario, Tim? That you know, given that the financial circumstances at Peterborough are maybe not optimal, I think yeah. it's fair to say that it's a case of just you know what we have, we hold. Yeah, I think that is fair to say, and and I know I've gone on record a couple of times with yourself saying that that Johnson will go in January, uh, and also that Ronnie Edwards will go, and and I do still expect that to be the case. <laughs> what I would hope is that whoever we sell Ronnie to uh, lets him come back for the rest of the season. I think that's in his interest. I think that would be mutually mm. beneficial. Um, Johnson, Clark Harris, I don't think it's a massive loss anyway because I think you're playing well without him. Yeah, which is incredible to say, isn't it? When he's you know two times League One Golden Boot winner. Um, yeah. But I, I completely agree with you. We, you know, I mean, yes, he scored a you know a, an equaliser in the 123rd minute yesterday uh, in mm. the FA Cup. But he's yeah, we, we're, we're forming a team without him, and rightly so because yeah. you know he he was all but gone. Um, so yeah, it's I think we'll. We'll see what January brings, but if we lose Edwards and, and JCH, I think that's okay. I think the problem we've got, as you quite rightly said, is that we can't bring anyone in, certainly not until Ronnie Edwards goes, because we just don't have that that capital now. So hmm. um, hopefully we don't lose anyone else. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be overly surprised if teams come in for Efron Mason Clark, potentially Poku, but I don't think he's quite ready for that step up yet. Um, but certainly Mason Clark, I think we'll have some suitors. It's just whether or not it's now. But again, even with Mason Clark, Tim, it's been, uh, I think he was signed from Barnet. Um, I can't, it was one of the previous windows, not in the summer, it was um, uh, last season. Yeah. So it's been quite a big journey for, for Mason Clark as well. And I'm just wondering, you know, would it be better for him to complete a season in League One uh, and then maybe make think about making him moves uh, a step up rather than sort of trying to rush things. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as a posh fan, <laughs> I'm going to say yes to that because I, I want him at the club. Um, you're quite right. I mean, we've seen it, you know, I think most League One teams that, that are selling clubs have, have seen it where players with high potential have moved too early. 
uh, in their career and, and therefore they they then come to regret it and they don't necessarily achieve what what they we know they could as a fan base so yeah absolutely I mean he seems pretty grounded um he, he had the you know he had the captaincy taken away from him which ironically I think was the best thing to happen to him because his form since then has, in, has improved hugely um but I, I he will he will go ultimately it's just whether or not it's it's now or in the summer I think the only way we're likely to keep him is if we do get promoted um he's better than league one so it would be wrong to hold him back um but hopefully we can at least keep him for for this campaign jake where do you see um uh peachborough united in the um the, the grand scheme of the league one promotion race i think they're up there i think they're you know with bolton oxford and pompey i think there's a top four and then it's the sort of the the outsiders trying to get in involved in that conversation um we played them a couple of weeks ago, Tim, wasn't it? Maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, to be honest, they, they were bad in the first half and great in the second half. And I can see what Tim means when he says they're a confidence team because in the second half, when I think they had the ball down our end pretty early on and they were able to capitalise and and um, go on and, and win the game pretty comfortably. Maybe it wasn't so comfortable in the first half because we should have been a couple of goals to the good, but such is life. Um, but... No, they're a good side, Gab. And Peterborough, and as much as it annoys me because they are a, a localist side to us, they, they've always got goals in the team, always. Uh, they've always had goals in their team. They've always got flair players who, who can put the ball on the net. And, you know, they're building some stability. I think Archie Collins has had a really good start in a posture as well. Um, the, the goal, I think it was the fourth goal against Cambridge, really epitomises what Archie Collins is all about for me. Driving How many goals there. did we score against our arch rivals, Jake? Just remind me. because It was five. Wasn't five, it? that was right. Yeah, five. Cambridge is blue. Thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah anyway. Yeah, so it, 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 he was great in driving the ball forward and, and, and giving the ball to, I think he slipped in Randall who played it across to Poku. But um, yeah, they, they've got some very good players and they are, I, I think they're firmly in the race. I mean, I would cement them in for a playoff spot now. Obviously, you mentioned there's a bit of perhaps unknown going in, in terms of January with Clark Carrius and, and Ronnie Edwards, who are, are players that could probably go up. And to be honest, I think Randall is, you know, while we spoke uh, earlier, Tim, that this was a really big year for Randall, I think he's out, like, performing amazingly. Um, he was a standout player when we played you a couple of weeks ago, I thought. Um, uh, and by the looks of it, he scored a good goal last night as well um, and played really well against Cambridge. So, yeah, Posh are... As much as I don't like to compliment Posh too much, they are a very, they're an exceptional side. And if they can add clean sheets to their weaponry, as they have been doing, then I don't think you can look past them for a, you know one of the top two um, playoff spots for sure. Can I take that now? Can we sign that as, <laughs> as being the agreement? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm, I'm fully aware. I'm, I'm, well, I'm fully aware that it were you know that, that, that there will be a slump that comes at some point. Ultimately, every every team goes through that. But it's yeah. I mean, Joel Randall, you mentioned there. He's, he's an interesting one. I, Gavin, you and I have spoken a few times. I've not no. been, I've not been a huge advocate of of Joel Randall, but in fairness to him, the last couple of weeks he seems to have. He seems to have found confidence. And I think the key to unlocking that, and if I'm honest, I think the reason we bought him in the first place was Archie Collins. I think um, Archie Collins was brought in to compliment Joel Randall uh, as former teammates. And Archie Collins in himself is a hell of a baller. He's really kind of putting in that engine room type uh, role at the club. But he's allowing Randall to, to play to his strengths. And I think we saw this last night in the, the FA Cup replay against Salford. Randall scored a, a really confident, cheeky lob. Um that you know, two months ago it would have gone into Rose Ed. Not there is a Rose Ed at Salford, but you get my point. Um, but he 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 just he, he's got that swagger about him now, and he's hopefully going to start to live up to his million pound purchase price. Um, I'm still not massively convinced uh, that he will, but he is absolutely heading in the right direction. So if I'm if I can be proved wrong about anything, I will absolutely be happy to be proved wrong about that. Absolutely, yeah. Let's hope he, his form can continue. Um, Tim, do you think that the lack of squad depth and possibly the threat, I suppose, of losing Ronnie Edwards is are the main things that you kind of would maybe separate Peterborough from possibly the very best teams in this league? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, so we we don't have any squad depth. Uh, we've been very lucky with with injuries. Uh, we've been lucky with suspensions. Touchwood so far, but as that Christmas period comes. 
the fixtures come thick and fast and we, we just don't have that squad depth, certainly not with any quality. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely a concern without a shadow of a doubt. A couple of key injuries and and, and we're in trouble, definitely. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's... Fergie never likes big squads, so it's kind of rinse and repeat of other seasons. I don't think it's just a financial constraint there. He likes to work with a small group of players, so I suspect it's probably intentional. But there are certainly some positions, I'm thinking kind of certainly on the on right back, uh, centre back if Edwards does go where we're, we're definitely going to need uh, one, if not two, decent players. But hopefully we can dip into the loan market. We, we generally do in January, and it's pulled out some great players for us in the past. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of players come in on loan um, mm. in, in January. Yeah, that's normally the best way of getting affordable quality isn't it um so we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that um tim thanks so much for, for joining us love your love. stuff on the yellow block podcast so uh yeah thanks for speaking to us no worries at all have a, a nice evening thanks fellas yeah cheers tim good luck for the, excuse me for the rest of the season Thank um you. <laughs> uh, delighted to introduce our next guest, hopefully without burping, is uh, <laughs> Colin Yates. Uh, I, was, I was burping, as I say. Um, no, Colin no. Yates from the uh, from the Fan Zone podcast. Uh, how are you, Colin? Yeah, magic. Yeah, thank you very much for asking. Yeah, all good. Yes, Keep winning, don't we? So I can't complain. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, uh, as for those listening on the podcast, Cole's a Bolton Wanderers supporter. Um, Colin, uh, Ricardo Santos has come back into the Bolton team and Bolton yeah. Wanderers have won five in six. Is it really as, as simple as that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry to to, to uh, go down the generic response route there, Gab, but yeah, it absolutely is. He's, he's a colossal. Um, obviously, I hear Jake talking a lot about the lad who left Lincoln to go down to Pom- Pompey. Obviously, he's, he's out for the season, which is awful to hear. Um, and I don't say that in inverted commas, believe you me. It is, it's never good when he's here. A professional, you know, have such a bad injury, um, but yeah, I think he's up there. He's up there with him as, as one of the best centre halves in the league, and I think it's hard to argue otherwise. I think pretty much every every team who come up against Ricardo Santos kind of realizes that. I think uh, well, the fan base well, and the players, of course, do as well. I think in the most part, um, but yeah, he, he's 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 fantastic. Absolutely. My question, my question with him though, Gab, just to just to add on that is. Can it? Can he? Can he cut it, or will he cut it in the championship? Um, really, you're questioning whether he'd cut it in the championship. I, I only, I only say that because when it when he comes up, when he comes up against players who have got that little bit more nous in terms of the the movement, shall we say, um, players that have seen it done it, occasionally he can come a little bit unstuck. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm Charlie White sticks in my mind earlier on this season. Obviously, he's a big lad like Rico, and, and obviously he's been seen the seen it all, done it type of thing sure. in the championship, shall we say, and in his struggles. However, Jordan Rose obviously physically isn't that, and he came up against Jordan Rose at the weekend, and, and the, within the first ten minutes, I was a little bit concerned again. I thought Jordan Rose is is pulling him about a little bit here, and then within five minutes of my thought process, he was he was all over him like a rash, and Jordan Rose didn't get a sniff all game, so that that quashed that kind of thought process that I had, but. At the same time, it does it does make me think a little bit. Will he will he cut it? I think he will. To be fair, he's got all the attributes, but it, you know, naturally, as, as a Wanderers fan who, who expects to get promoted this season, you, you do question that a little bit in the back of your mind. You say you um, expect to get promoted this season. Do you think that puts maybe a bit more pressure on Bolton than possibly some of the other sides, like um, I would say Oxford especially, um, and and maybe Peterborough to an extent, who we've just talked about in the sense that um, neither of those were necessarily expecting to be right up there in terms of the automatic promotion candidates? I think it does, but I think if you're signing a contract for Bolton Wanderers Football Club, you've got to expect a little bit of a, a expectation and pressure. Yeah. It kind of comes with territory. Um, you know, they're playing in front of 24,000, 25,000 every week. You know, so ultimately that comes with its own pressures. So not only that, the club have, have obviously said that that's kind of the intention as well. So they've, they've, they've piled that pressure on, on themselves in many respects. Um, but yeah, we, we've been in the lower echelons of the EFL for, in my humble opinion, a little bit too long now. And, and I think it's about time we, we we went back to where a lot of people think we, we belong type of thing. Sure. Yeah, no, I, t- I totally get that. Um, I'm just wondering where what you think Bolton are going to need in January towards uh, reaching that objective. 
Yeah, I'm laughing because it's often a conversation that we have on the pod. Um, <laughs> and, it, and and I said it from, well, my opinion was right at the beginning of the season and in the summer that we should have signed somebody in the middle of the park, someone who's got a little bit of that nasty side about about his game and has kind of seen seen it, done it and can play a bit as well and understands what he never expects from a tactical point of view. Uh, the only question, the only the only issue with that type of player who's obviously going to be playing at a higher level is going to cost a, a lot of money. And I don't think Ian ever obviously thought that was necessary. And it, it kind of isn't because we, we're obviously where we are without that type of player. But some games you do think, you know, it's it ruffles up a little bit here. We might be a little bit, we might come up from stuck, but our quality is kind of showing through at the moment, which is nice to see. So to answer your question, centre of the park, if it was up to me. But um, yeah, it's not. Ian Everett knows best. Um, Jake, yeah. uh what do you, do you think? What's your opinion on that balance of you want to have technical footballers in your team that have that level of that top level of ability, but sometimes you also need a balance of being able to mix it up a bit at times as well. What's your take on, you know, where that that best sort of balance is? Well, I think if you look at it from a Bolton point of view, where they're third in the league and probably one of the best technical sides in the division, mm-hmm. um, a lot of teams are going to go and want to scrap with them because. Uh, that's all they know and also they think that's the best way of disrupting Bolton's flow um, I've, I've seen it before when we were top of the the National League and League Two teams down the bottom or even in mid-table just come to frustrate and try and kick you kick you out of the game and it happens all the time when you're at the top of the, the top of a division um, yeah it, it's really important it is important to have te- you know technical players and Bolton have got those in abundance um, to, to play your way through that but also you do need that Big muscly man, of the, you know, and I. To be honest, I, I don't see why Rico Santos is, is a big presence, and I think if 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 it is getting a bit, the game is going that way. If he can just hit someone, if he yeah, can, just, yeah. and I, I also, I, I mean, I don't know because Cole will see him every week, but I have a feeling like George Tom, Thompson could do that as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I listened to your podcast while I was at work, Cole, this morning. And you're all sat praising him after the, the goal he scored. If he can hit a ball that hard, there's no way you can't hit a player that hard. You know yeah, no, I mean? to, to be fair, Jay, mate, you, you're absolutely spot on. He has got that about his, about his game. It, as a result of that, he's he's got quite a lot of yellow cards this season. Yeah. But he just needs to learn how to manage that. Again, he's only 21 years old and he's such yeah. a talent. Um, he's obviously got that kind of box to boxness, if that's a phrase or a word. <laughs> well, there uh, We'll go with it about his game and obviously he's kind of developing himself and, and that is a part of his game that is developing um yeah. i think obviously having carl dempsey in and around the squad when he gets fit as well that he gives you a little bit of a snap in midfield as well which we, which yeah. is always good to have because obviously we've, we've missed him we've not had him for the last three three weeks three or four weeks now so he'll be a big um place sometimes you get players that can do both like, yeah. like, for example, we uh, um, we've got Ethan Hamilton, who's been at Bolton, I believe, as well. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a very good technical footballer with a ball at his feet on his left foot, um, can strike him really nicely. But he also can leave his foot in and be nasty. Mm-hmm. We've also got Erohan who can do the same as well. So um, yeah, it, it is massively important because teams will go to. I'm going to call it the Reebok because I don't want to yeah. call it the other name. Um, people, people, you know, teams will come there to set up and want to fight with Bolton. And if they're going to actually, you know, get the three points and win, you've got to fight back. Especially when it gets to March, April, and then the result, when the performance don't matter, and it's just result based. Mm. If Bolton can't stand up to a fight, every team is going to go up against Bolton and go, well, these lot can't up a scrap. Yeah. So we'll make it. We'll make it a fight, and and they'll struggle, and you you might end up. You know, not achieving your your season objectives that way. Yeah, I think for me it was it was more my preference in terms of what, obviously Gab asked what position I'd, I'd like, and obviously I'm not I'm not kind of saying we've not got that about us. It's just I'd I'd like a little bit more of that hmm. nose. You know what I mean? And that well, that, that striker, too. Cole, because I'm not I, and I'm, I listened to I did listen to you. You you guys sort of said that Bod Varson and Charles will probably be your preferred yeah. two. Yeah. Do you think that you could do with a different option? Because the, the only mobile forward that I see Bolton having at the moment is Dion Charles. I don't see Dan, and, and having watched Dan for half a season and get very frustrated with him, he's not yeah. a mobile centre forward. Vic Adebayeo is not someone that's going to run in behind and stretch defences. And no. I don't think Cameron Jerome's got the legs to do it either. Would you not maybe look at perhaps loaning a, a young one from the Premier League or the Championship that's going to go in 
and the stretch defences and, and yeah. then allow your Dempsey's and your Morley's a bit more time to, to threaten from the edge but of the it, box. But it's that um it's that partnership in it though, really, that that, that that's important. Not not necessarily having the, the skill set to be able to run in behind like Dion does, but it's 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 that finding that rhythm with 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 the other partner. And I think with Vic, as much as he pains you a little bit with his lack of output in terms of goals, he offers so much to Dion as a partner and gives Dion that space and fluidity to to turn a damage team. And I think the reason why Dion is scoring so many goals this season is because obviously we signed Vic last January, and I think they are they have they have gelled. Um, a lot of the off the ball stuff that people don't ordinarily ordinarily not take notice of, mm. Vic's very good at. Um, so yeah, I do understand what you're saying, but I, I think that that purchase, and I think it probably will need to be a purchase, would would need to be made in the summer if we were to get promoted, yeah. Jake, to get to invest in another forward that can play alongside Dion in in the championship. Um, yeah. Do you know what? It's really interesting you say that because I've t- spoken to um, Notts County fans who and their managers, um, a head coach called Luke Williams, and um, they're one of the things they said is that um, so that you get some managers who don't like to throw new players in too quickly and maybe especially mi- mid-season because mm-hmm. they want um, partnerships and understandings to be able to be forged or for them to understand how the manager works or what their style of play is and what they ask of them and then it's like a it's more of a gradual thing uh, mm-hmm. and I do wonder if from what you're saying Ian Everett is kind of man- minded a bit like that. I do, I do agree. I think that is the thing. I think per, from my in, in, from my perspective, what I see when they sat, make signings in January is not for the remainder of the season. It's for the following season, and I think that's what him and Chris, Chris Markham try and focus on. Um, so absolutely, I think that is a strategy for, from a transfer point of view. And I also think that's probably the reason why in January we'll see us strengthen again, but we'll strengthen with Championship quality players. On probably when he's one or two just to kind of get us over the line this season, but more to have an impact next season and give them the opportunity to gel with the lads that we've got and, and obviously build on, on what we're doing, the good stuff that we're doing at the moment type of thing. Um, yeah, that's I think that's the approach, Gab, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, talk to us about Josh Sheehan, Cole. How good a season is he having? Yeah, he's he's majestic. He's um, he's very he's so very hard to play against. I think he'd be an absolute nightmare if you were a centre midfielder because... Thing with, with Josh, he can go either way. Obviously, in, in his, he, he pivots on either left or right foot so well, and it's very hard to get the ball off him because he's obviously his low centre of gravity. Um, he's beginning to show us why he he was as sought after as he was when he was at um, excuse me, down Newport. south, and down Wales, Newport. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, obviously, and he was sought after. I think with him though, I think I mentioned this on the podcast at the weekend. I think one of his main drivers is is the Wales squad. I think he's quite clearly such a passionate Welshman that he wants to be in and around that that squad. That well, and obviously he is at the moment in the Wales well setup. So I think his, his drivers are, and the reason why we're seeing him perform so well is because he's got that determination to be in amongst the, the national side. Um, and, and I think that's why we're seeing an improvement in his in his performances. Um, it's an additional driver, not only to play in the championship, but also to to, to get international recognition. But yeah, he's 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 beautiful to watch. Um, could he have a few more goals to his game? Probably. Mm-hmm. But what he offers in terms of midfield is at this level, I think you'll do well to find a player that, that's got so much ability um, with with and without the ball. Mm. Um, yeah. What- what a, what a crucial player! I also wanted to ask you about Josh Cogley, Cole, because we've mm-hmm. um, we're coming up with a, yeah, a ranking of the top five yeah. right backs or right wing backs in League One. Um, yeah. how, how how do you sort of sum up Josh Cogley's start to to life at Bolton? Yeah, I was a little bit concerned at the start, Gab. To be honest, obviously stepping in for Connor Bradley, it was a it was a bit of a worry. Like, and I thought yeah, yeah, coming from Tramby, with all with all due respect to them, and obviously in League Two, you you wonder whether you can make a step up, but He's proven that he's too good for League One, and he's proven that he's 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 a Championship fullback. And I know obviously he's played at that level with Birmingham, hasn't he? Um, yeah. And his performance is a very very seven out of ten. There's no like, Connor were fantastic. Don't get me wrong, and offensively he was great. But I think he's all Josh is all around game as a, as, a, as a defender and as well as an attacker. 
which is obviously important for for us as the way we play, is um, is probably more beneficial to us than having Connor. Um, and I do say that pretty pretty lightly because Connor is such a talent and he will have such a good career. But at the, yeah. where we are at the moment, uh, Josh Decus Cogley is, is is perfect for us. Um, his output has been really good as well. I, I think he's only got two assists and a goal, but he, it's 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 the he readily makes himself available in the, from an offensive part of view, and, and it's, it's always an option. Uh, I, I also think it makes a difference. Um, partly the sort of physical tenacity side of things that you talked about, where he's someone who can kind of just win those duels. Um, yeah. A bit like yeah. Vic, Victor Adeboyejo, I think he can do it at top as well. You've got players who can just win those 50-50s, uh, yeah. and then that kind of gives you a bit of the space to play. So maybe to that end, you can kind of... Um, you can get away a bit with not having that um, that midfield enforcer because you've got other players in other areas of the pitch. True, Jules. Yeah. To be fair, a lot a lot of our play doesn't really come through the middle. So the nine times out of ten, the ball isn't in the center of the park in right. our firms because it's rotated that that quickly and that often that mm. that midfield battle probably isn't isn't as as, as, yeah. as, as as a thing. Do you get what I mean? Um, sure. I'm just thinking about the, like, the last game against Blackpool. Um, Having said all that, Josh Sheen and probably um, Paris McGowan were probably our best two players in that game before they both got booked. But yeah, but yeah. Um, so let, well, let's let's do the ranking then, uh, folks. Um, so this is uh, the top five right backs or right wing backs in League One. We've got Peter Chioso, Josh Cogley, Lassa Sorensen, Jack Hunt, and Luther Wilding. Um, do you think, Cole, that Josh Cogley would be the best uh, right back or could be the best right back or right wing back in League One? Or do you reckon it might be someone else? I think it's all, you're always going to have that little bit of bias towards your own, your sure. own aren't you? Let's, let's be honest. And, and all I'm not. Time, I yeah. think it's Cogley. <laughs> I, that, we, we, we were linked with him in the summer, Cole. I was gutted that he went to Bolton. It, we were linked with him for weeks. Pretty much the season ended. Uh, and he got he was he was out of contract. We were linked with him for weeks. I was thinking, oh my god, yes, I've watched loads of Tranmere the year before, thinking, oh my yeah. god, what a player he's going to be under Kennedy, oh, athletic mm-hmm. wing back. That's what we need. And then he, because from what I remember, that he was meant to be going. To, um, weren't you meant to be getting Kane Wilson? And then Kane Wilson went to Derby, and then you got Cogley, and it all well off uh, off the rec- Well, it, according to the rumor mill, shall we say, we pulled yeah. out of the deal to sign Kane Wilson because of his injury. He failed some kind of injury record, injury um, fitness no, test or some description. Yeah. yeah, so there was a bit of a uncertainty, I think, from um, the management team about about him. So obviously, naturally, you always got to have plenty of options, aren't you? And, and, and should he be in the conversation? Do we think? Who's that? Kane Wilson. Yeah. I, I don't think he's played an awful lot, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me, you know what, let me double check. Uh, I feel like if he if he'd played a lot... Well, I think on his day, I think he probably would be arguably the, be- the best right wing back or right back if he is playing. I don't think he's played much. because no, sure, he's, he's, he's had three league starts for Derby and then come off the bench nine times oh, in the okay. league. So, so that'd, be the reason, that'd be the reason why we didn't sign him and got unsigned Cogley instead. <laughs> to, be fair, if, to be fair, initially I would have been more in favour of, I would have actually thought of it better suited the other way around. I would have thought Kane Wilson makes more sense for an Ian Everett team. And I would oh, have well. said to Paul Warren side, Josh Cogley would have been the better fit. I'd only seen bits at Forest Green of him, to be fair, so I can't really form much of an opinion. Sure. Um, yeah, but yeah, I do understand, obviously, he's, he's a talented lad. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, Lassa Sorensen, Jake, you're not going to vouch for, for Lassa? Uh, he's, yeah. But the problem with Lassa is he is good. He's very good. He's a centre midfielder converted to a right wing back. Um, mm. uh, he, I, I would probably put him third in your list of five okay. um, behind Cogley and Kioso. I think Kioso is really good at, at, at right back. Um, yeah, Kioso is super athletic as well as yeah. He? Those would have been my top two, and I think Sorensen is probably the next, the next, the next best. Um, he's you'd been a revel- to, you'd, you'd have him ahead of Jack Hunt then. At yeah, Bristol, yeah, I would. Yeah, In, he's a revel- He's been a revelation since going to right back. He, he had no future at Lincoln in midfield under mm. Appleton, and then Kennedy yeah. sort of noticed he'd probably be better as a wing back, and he's not really looked back. Uh, he's f- from Jay, sorry, sorry, Jim. It's interrupt, interrupt you. When did he move to right back for the for the? Uh, it was sort of, sort of just around Christmas time. So when we played right. you 
uh, the bank and we drew one all, um, mm-hmm. he would have played. He played right wing back that night. And because his, his output, his output this season is pretty impressive. To be fair, isn't he? Like I think what three assists, four goals in in nineteen and all, all, all. Yeah, all yeah. It, 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 he's got that cut that calmness in front of goal, and he, he's able to having been a midfielder, he's got that technical ability on the ball to to find options. You know, under Kennedy, we played with really high wing backs and and his ability on the ball to be able to find a pass was really crucial because Kennedy's system was all about playing it um, horizontally in, in, in into the box. And Sorensen has a really good pass on him. And it, we found out this year he's pretty good at finding the net as well. And also... He's a great he, dribbler as well. You, um, there was a chance he set up for himself at Bristol Rovers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he ran half the pitch, yeah. He did, yeah, yeah, he ran he, half the pitch, so he's an amazing ball. Player. And he's energetic. He's he's mm. literally. I, I don't know if this is all Danish people. If you if, if we've all found that with having Danes in our team, but he literally he's literally mm. like a Labrador. He just he doesn't he doesn't get knackered. Like I, I think we played Port Vale on um, on Saturday. There was like no, we were in the hundred tenth minute or hundred hundredth minute for whatever, and. Um, he was still check, trekking back, and I was thinking, "How on earth? I'm getting knackered by just watching you run up and down the field. You must be shattered." But he is a good wing back, and he does. He definitely deserves to be in the conversation. And to be honest, Gab, his contract's up in, in in the summer. I'm starting to think we need to start thinking about a contract because there will be suitors because he is he is that good at wing back. I think the fact he can play in midfield as well, I think, is a really yeah. attractive proposition. It was the same as Teo Eden, though, Gab. He, we, we changed him to a left-back. And then when mm. we when we did, he, when he was very successful at left-back, he got his move up to the championship with uh, Blackburn. So I'm mm. starting to worry that that we, we might be starting to see the same with, um, with Sorensen, for sure. Possibly. Um, I think, though, um, we're seeing this... Um, funny trend in the modern game where uh, managers like right backs who can also invert into midfield uh, yep. it's happening a lot in the championship mm-hmm. so if you've got a right wing back that's also got experience playing in midfield i think that could be um yeah quite an attractive proposition um jack hunt i think uh, has had pretty good output for bristol rovers this season as well but some good uh deliveries in um seems to be a very driven right back as well um mm. and then you've got matt um as matt farley made the case for uh for luther wild in um i would probably say those two though would be my fourth and fifth would we would we be happy to agree with that or i yeah i would i would go i would go and this is my list cogley kioso Sorensen, hunt Wilding. I've not seen Wilding yet. I've seen the re- I've seen the others, but I haven't you look seen forward to, You've got that to look forward to on Saturday, yeah. Mate. Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> Jack uh, Jack Hunt's not played many games. He only played, he only played eight games this season. Gab, am I right with that? Um, yeah, he's been injured a little bit. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive. When he, played, when he has played, he's been had pretty good. Out really good with Luke with um, Luke Thomas down the right hand side for Bristol. Like the interplay that they had, the triangles with um, Sam Finley and then Luke Thomas. They were Tearing us apart down there, right inside for twenty minutes or so. Yeah, yeah two goals they... and two assists is pretty impressive, to be fair, for, for considering the lack of game game time is that. Yeah, I think they've established a really good uh, a really good pairing. Um, probably a bit of a lean year for for right backs, I would say, in League One in terms of like you know Connor Bradley. I think was like a massive standout. I don't think we've necessarily got anyone quite like that. Um, but yeah, Josh Cogley and Peter Kioso seem to be having a great season. Should, should we give it to Josh Cogley the uh, the accolade? Not just because I'm here. Don't to be fair, we, we had Peter, <laughs> we had Peter Kioso um, a couple of seasons back. What did um, you think of Kioso at Bolton? I, well, to be honest, it was when we were in the um, pandemic. We, mm. or were we just coming out of it, or yeah, we we're certainly in it. Um, and it was all—it's always hard to tell when you watch games on through iPhone or whatever your platform. What and a it, season! What a season know, that was! The level of ability because the camera was just—you you can't gauge it, can you? Let's be honest. But from mm. the output was pretty good to be fair to him, and he—he he, he, he was pretty impressive. But at League Two, you, you kind of expect it given his given his background, wouldn't you? Sure. Um, What's your list, was, Um, my list. I um, do you know what? I think I um might go quite similar to what you've got, um, Jake. Um, 
I would go for um, P I might go for PT Tikioso as my number one actually because I'm a massive, uh, massive fan of his, uh, and I just think he gets up and down so well, um, and I think he's just such an exciting um, right back. But I can, um, I, I can certainly. I also think Kioso has kind of uh, managed to evolve his game a little bit and add a bit more sort of tactical awareness. I think under under Darren Ferguson and things like that. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Kioso. Sorry, I might go for Kioso, um, but. But I think it could just as easily be Cogley. Um and then yeah, I'm happy to go with Last Sorensen third and then Jack Hunt and um and, and Lethal Wilder. Just to, to to add to to Josh, obviously he is a he's a talented fullback at this level, but the way he's played in eighteen games a season so far, which mm. is he's very much an ever present in our in our starting eleven. Yeah. And um with that obviously comes a lot of kind of um not only obviously expectation, but demands the way that we play with, with the, the, the press and, and, and the relentless kind of attacking um, that we expect from our fullbacks. And, and, he, and, he, and he never stops. He's always available. He's, he's a very, very fit lad. Um, and I think that's an, an asset within itself, really, that you, you can have such a player that's such a has such high demands on him that, that performs week in, week out. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, all credit to him for that. Um, listen, uh, gents, it's been such a pleasure to chat about League One with you this evening. Uh, thanks always to, to my guest, Cole, from the Fan Zone podcast. Go check that out. Thanks to Jake from the League One podcast and Channel 72. Thanks to all our guests tonight and to you for watching at home. This has been EFL Debate, the League One podcast. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>